After a year of teasing, Wahoo has launched its Speedplay PowerLink Zero Power Meter pedals and its new Kicker Smart Roller. And wouldn't you believe it, we have our hands on both to show you today. Let's start with the Speedplay PowerLink Zero Power Meter pedals. Stick around for the second half of the video though to learn more about the new Kicker Roller and for my first impressions of both products. Now we know there are plenty of Speedplay stands who have been asking for a Speedplay power meter pedal for a long time and they are finally here. Priced at a penny under $1,000 or £850 for a dual sided set or $650 or £550 for a single sided set, the Wahoo Speedplay PowerLink Zero pedals have a claimed accuracy rating of plus or minus 1%, a rechargeable battery with a claimed life of 75 hours and weigh 278 grams per set on our scales. Wahoo has also said that upgrade kits to convert a single sided set to a dual sided set will be available post launch, but at the time of filming, pricing and availability for these has yet to be confirmed. Now that's just a quick summary of the specs, so for all the juicy details, head to bikeradar.com. As always, we put a link to the article in the description below. One of the key selling points for power meter pedals is they promise a quick and easy installation process on practically any bike. For the Wahoo pedals, that means just an 8mm Allen key and no torque wrench is required. Similar to the Favero Asioma Duo power meter pedal system, the power meter electronics reside within the pedal spindle and a bulbous pod added to create more room. While this doesn't look as clean as having everything housed entirely within the spindle, something which Garmin has managed since it launched the Vector 3 power meter pedal system back in 2017, it doesn't confer any notable performance drawbacks for road cyclists. The pedal body itself retains key speed place features that many know and love, such as a large amount of freely adjustable float, dual sided entry and exit, and low weight. The power meter internals and pods naturally do add a little weight versus a set of standard speed play pedals, but at just 54 grams for a dual sided set, it is an insignificant amount. Crucially, these still come in around 30 to 45 grams lighter than the Fafero Asioma Duo or Garmin Rally RS200 power meter pedals, if that kind of thing matters to you. If you'd like to see my in-depth review of the Garmin Rally power meter pedals, you can click the card on screen now or on the link in the description below. Some small changes have been made to stack height and Q-factor relative to the non-power meter versions, and that's in order to accommodate all the extra electronics. Stack height is increased by 1.5 millimeters to 13 millimeters and Q-factor is up by two millimeters to 55 millimeters. In comparison, the Favero Asioma Duo and Garmin Rally power meter pedal systems have stack heights of 10.5 millimeters and 12.2 millimeters respectively. Now, in all likelihood, most riders won't notice any difference from such small changes, but perhaps more importantly, these changes have ruled out any backwards compatibility between the new power meter spindles and other Speedplay pedal body options. It's therefore not possible for existing Speedplay Comp, Zero, Nano or Aero pedal owners to upgrade a set of those pedals. There's also no option for owners of legacy Speedplay pedals, such as the Speedplay Zero Parve, to cobble together a custom set of power meter pedals and yes, that pun was intentional. The PowerLink Zero is also limited to just one road-specific pedal body and cleat option. There's no off-road or gravel-specific pedal body option. Similar to the Favero Asioma platform, it's possible the spindle pods could interfere with the tread on mountain bike or gravel shoes, making an off-road version, perhaps with something like the Speedplay Sizer pedal body, tricky to implement. Of course, a big question for any new entrant to the power meter market is whether it can produce accurate and reliable power data. With its extensive experience making some of the best smart trainers on the market, such as the Wahoo Kicker and Wahoo Kicker Core, Wahoo does have more experience than most in this regard, however. But of course, the proof will be in the pudding, so I'll be putting these through their paces versus my array of power meters and smart trainers, so look out for an in-depth review coming soon. Okay, so on to the Kicker Roller, which I have set up here behind me. The Wahoo Kicker Roller is a set of smart rollers which promises to combine the convenience and natural ride feel of rollers with the performance advantages of a smart trainer. In terms of pricing, the Wahoo Kicker Roller comes in at just under $800 or £700 or $1,400 or £1,200 when bundled with a set of single-sided Wahoo Speedplay PowerLink Zero power meter pedals. One thing worth noting is that the Kicker Roller requires the use of an external power meter to provide power measurement as it doesn't have one built in. 
When a non-bike power meter is connected, the kicker roller can then connect to indoor cycling apps such as Wahoo System and Zwift and control the resistance like a traditional smart trainer. The kicker roller works by taking the idea of traditional rollers and adding a resistance unit, a 4.7 kilo flywheel and smart connectivity. Now, as an aside, this isn't strictly a new idea. Elite, another big name in smart trainers, has made its own smart rollers, the Arion Digital Smart B Plus rollers, since at least 2017. That set of rollers does have its own built-in power meter, but importantly, as we'll come on to in a bit, our review showed it isn't particularly accurate, which obviously dents how useful they are as a training tool. Back to the kicker roller though. When paired with a power meter, the kicker roller can vary the resistance at the rear wheel to simulate gradient changes in virtual cycling apps or to guide you through interval workouts in erg mode. Up front, in place of a second roller for your front wheel, Wahoo has put a wheel mount which it calls the safety tire gripper. Essentially, this mount holds your front wheel in place a bit like portable rollers do, but there's no need to remove your front wheel first. This makes the learning curve for the kicker roller substantially shallower than a set of traditional rollers. Still, if that's a skill you're interested in learning, you can check out our guide to how to ride on rollers via the link in the description below. Of course, the downside of all of these extra features is a significant amount of added size and weight. A set of standard non-smart Elite Arion rollers weighs just over 9 kilos, for example, whereas the Wahoo Kicker Roller weighs a whopping 30 kilos. Now, Wahoo says the Kicker Roller makes the ideal warm-up platform before events or big training sessions, but you'd better have strong arms or a soigneur to do the heavy lifting for you. So, why doesn't the Kicker Roller have a built-in power meter like other smart trainers, I hear you asking? After all, being able to measure your power output is arguably a basic requirement for any smart trainer in 2022, so it's curious to see Wahoo, which has a history of building accurate power meters into its direct drive smart trainers, not build one into the kicker roller. Well, Wahoo admitted it simply wasn't possible to build a sufficiently accurate power meter into the roller. This is because the roller can't directly measure your pedaling force and there's basically no good way to account for the varying losses due to rolling resistance from the tires either. In the end, Wahoo decided that allowing the kicker roller to pair with an on-bike power meter and use the data from that was the better option. And since the kicker roller connects to power meters via ANT Plus, it should be possible to use practically any modern power meter to do this. Of course, if you don't own a power meter, that does leave you in a bit of a bind with the kicker roller. But to ensure an easy transition for anyone in that situation, Wahoo is, as already mentioned, selling a bundle containing the kicker roller and a set of the single-sided Speedplay Powerlink Zero power meter pedals for $1,400 or £1,200. Okay, so I have connected the Speedplay power meter pedals to the kicker roller. I've got my kit on, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of riding on Zwift and I'll give you my first impressions. Okay, here we go. Okay, quite good ride feel. Like, obviously they don't feel like rollers because I'm not having to kind of concentrate. You know, when you're riding rollers, there's that, you have to balance. Whereas with these, you don't have to balance. There's more movement than, a lot more bike movement than with a smart trainer. You know, a smart trainer kind of bolts you into place. Whereas with this, you can feel the bike rocking underneath you in a much more uh, natural way which is quite nice um, quite loud <laughs> but then obviously I think that's to do with the you know the tires that I'm using as well power numbers I'm using a stages left right power meter on my Garmin and obviously I've got the speed play power numbers up on screen everything looks pretty good just at first glance which is nice to see the resistance changes don't, at first, they don't seem to be quite as noticeable as on a smart trainer where it really clamps on the resistance quite quickly. These seem to be slightly more gradual. So the front wheel clamp is interesting. Like normally on a normal smart trainer, you know, the back would be really lock solid and the front wheel, there'd be some movement. So it's a slightly unusual situation having the front locked and the back more movable, but it does feel very secure, like there's no chance of the there's no chance of the front wheel going anywhere, so that's good. Yes, this is my first time on speed play pedals and there is definitely a lot of float. Um, 
think the stack height is noticeably low as well and I think my saddle might be slightly too high compared to the previous pedals that I had on these or the cleats that I had on these shoes. So my first impressions are generally that it's a, an interesting experience. It's definitely a different experience to riding a normal smart trainer. I wouldn't necessarily say it's kind of better or worse, but it is different and I can see the kind of convenience factor of being able to just put your bike on, take it off without having to take the wheel off or change anything, so that's nice. Obviously I need to do some you know, more in-depth testing to test how they kind of quickly the gradient responds, the kind of accuracy of the pedals and stuff like that, but first impressions are good. So there you have it, Wahoo's new Speedplay Powerlink Zero power meter pedals and the new Kicker Roller Smart Rollers. Are smart rollers something you'd consider instead of a smart trainer? Is the Speedplay power meter pedal the answer to your data obsessed prayers? As always, let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to like this video if you haven't already, subscribe to our wonderful channel and click the little bell icon so that every time we upload a new video, you get a notification.